Welcome Park Facebook group for this week's tip of the week. This week we have Josh Ackman from Tech Support here. We're going to go through the Hypertherm predictive pump series. What to watch out for, what to, what to monitor and how to keep that thing running smooth so you can allow it to predict when you need to do maintenance so you don't have costly downtime. Josh, welcome. And if you want to take us around and show us a few things on this, that'd be great. Yeah, Joe, let's go over to the predictive pump side here. And we'll kind of start at the beginning here um, with the intense fire. So if you do have a leak on your seals, um, you will get an overstroke alarm eventually. But with the predictive pump, you are, it will predict that you're going to have that. So you can schedule your maintenance um, on your schedule of your downtime. So you're not interrupting in the middle of production here. So we'll start at the beginning here. When it starts leaking, it will leak into... I'll just pull these lines off so you can see this a little better. It'll leak into this drip tray. What this drip tray does is it runs the lines, runs lines down through, and it'll go past the sensors. And when it leaks so much, it needs to see a certain amount of drips per second leaking, and that will give you um, a warning then. Just slide this back here. So right down here is your seal maintenance technology. These are the drip lines and it will have, each one is for right by it. So if it is leaking out of this first line here, you're having an issue on this end of your intense fire and with your seals. When you do have a leak here, you will see, I'll just pop it away from the sensor so the sensor does not read, but you will see that the, the light will turn blue and you know you are having an issue with this side then. Also, if we look up top here, it does have the light on the end here and that light will turn amber color when you're getting a warning and that warning will keep running and the leak is not major then but it will turn red and it'll give you a half hour of runtime after a half hour then it will shut you down and you will have to do your maintenance because you can possibly do damage to the intense fire with how severe the leaks are then Hey Josh, is there anything we should be doing for maintenance on like these drip lines, sensors? I, I believe the sensors don't have much maintenance, but what about the drip lines? Yeah, sensors you do not have to do anything with. Um, obviously debris if you're getting a lot of dust build up, stuff like that around it. But the drip lines here, we can disconnect them drip lines and with water flowing through anything, you'll get a mold and mildew build up with that. So what we can do is just pop that line out push up on this connector and pull down on the lines. That'll disconnect your line and you can do the same with the back side here. And on the back side, it will have this little retainer clip. This little retainer clip holding right in between here. So to make sure that that does not fall off. But we can pull our lines. I like to do the whole thing but you can, if you want, just pull this top out and clean them lines out. What you wanna do, just rinse them lines out and then also take a, a cylinder brush and clean them so for surely right in front of that sensor, they are nice and clean. That sensor can read if there's any water flow going through them lines. And then just put it back once you get them all clean. Connect our line at the top and at the bottom. So Josh, if you get an error, say you got a seal problem at this end of the intensifier, do we have videos or documents on Park Self-Help website on how to do them replacement? Yes, we do. Uh, there are hypertherm videos, um, parkindustries.com, and just click on the service and training guides. You can click, this would be a Sabrejet XP, and those will give you, if you click on the XP, the hypertherm, that'll eliminate anything to do with these, or you can do a quick search on uh, seal maintenance with that. So, so with the Hypertherm XP, there's a couple different pump options. The different horsepower really doesn't matter for the seals, but if you had a predictive versus an Eshion, you would want to select the correct uh, video or document, correct? Yes, uh, between like the, the predictive and the Eshion, the seals are, are different. So your assembly and disassembly would be different with that. So you wanna make sure you are selecting the correct intensifier. 
and it will, if you select your intensifier, it will only show the documents for your intensifier. We do have them selected like that. So, so people like Josh, we have some predefined consumable kits, which these seals would be in, but we can also call someone like Josh and just say, hey, Josh, what seals would you have around? Make sure you're ready. When this thing turns amber, it's time to plan that maintenance because once it turns red, you have 30 minutes and the machine's going to shut down. Now you're forced to maintain it. And if you don't have them seals there, you're going to be waiting till we can ship you one overnight. Likely it's a small part, not very heavy, not terribly expensive, but you'll waste a lot of downtime and effort and whatnot getting that part there. So um, please reach out to us. We would love to help you understand what you should have locally so you don't have that unplanned downtime. Josh, any parting words, any other just general tools when you look at the top side of this uh, intensifier you'd recommend people having? Uh, definitely having the proper wrenches and anything, everything for any high pressure fittings. You want proper tools for the job. Um, other than that, any high pressure lines are a very good item to have on hand. Um, because if a line blows, you can also be down for a simple six inch line and you would have downtime then. So if you were to buy some bulk line and have, have what you need on hand, would you have a coning and threading tool also so you could cut and make up the, any line you would really need to have? Yes, if you're doing bulk line and not the pre-cut line that is coned and thread already, um, some t a lot of times the bulk line definitely pays off. Um, you can make your own line with your own coner and threader with a bender, and um, that can save you a lot, of, a lot of extra parts having on hand also. Very good. Well, hopefully you found this interesting. I know if you pay attention to this predictive pump, we really should minimize your unplanned downtime. You should be able to do the maintenance on your schedule when you want to, um, when it's needed, obviously, but on your schedule. That's the ideal time to be doing maintenance, not in the middle of a slab when the machine shuts off and you got a you know, tight deadline to get something done so it can be installed the next day. We appreciate your time today. Please, in the comments, if you have any recommended videos you would like to see from us, let us know. Put that in the comments. We will do them. If not, thank you for watching and uh, have a great day.